LinkedIn believes B2B marketing can be B2 brilliant, B2 bold, and B2 breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose built to make B2B mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer journey while building your brand. A platform with the trusted data and lead generation you need to beat KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always being seen by those who matter. So get ready to be to boldly go where no marketers have gone before. Because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything it can be. Rethink your B2B marketing LinkedIn ads and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. On this episode of Winfluence. It was a market that, that we saw as kind of every side can benefit from it. The brand's getting a lot of good data. They're probably conducting their own market research in other, in other ways, probably more expensive, maybe not even from a as good an audience as the influencers' followers. So it's, it's a win for them, for the influencer. All they really have to do is put a survey link in, in their social media to their followers. They can make additional revenue from the brands by providing that uh, valuable data. And from the influence or from the influencers' followers, they're getting a way to kind of provide some feedback um, and win prizes. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls, and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. The most overlooked facet of marketing execution across our industry is consumer research. The large brands and agencies swear by it. But the 1% is just that, 1%. When you drop down to the lower end of the large brand spectrum and then to medium brands and small businesses, consumer insights are seldom even talked about. Not enough businesses invest in consumer research. Not enough agencies sell it through the way they should. What replaces it for those who don't invest in consumer research is typically generic, broad statistical analysis hardly qualifying as research, proliferated by software companies as link-bait content on their websites. I recall years ago a brand manager at a conference saying they post all their important content on Facebook at 10.30 a.m. on Saturdays because, in her words, quote, research shows that's when you get the best engagement, end quote. Never mind that consumers don't go to Facebook on Saturdays for business purposes. Never mind that the data source for that probably was bogus. I couldn't help myself and inquired about what research she was referring to. It was a blog post by a self-proclaimed data scientist with zero academic credentials as such, who happened to be a writer for the blog of a social media software company. There was no research, just stats pulled from a very small data set that wasn't relevant to 99% of the businesses in the universe. The reason few brands actually invest in consumer research is that good, sound consumer research is generally cost prohibitive. It's tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars to commission a research instrument. They also take months to complete, so they're pricey and slow. But where there is a gap in the marketplace, there will be someone who tries to fill it. Matt Miller is the founder of RADS, a tool to collect consumer insights in a matter of hours, not months, and for investments of hundreds to low thousands of dollars, not hundreds of thousands of dollars. RADS allows brands to ramp up short question and short duration surveys for consumers in minutes. They're gamified to drive participation and reward those participating. The questions are structured in a way that eliminates false answers and false positives from participants. Brands can use the survey instrument for their own private list of participants like customers or newsletter subscribers, or they can build open surveys and promote them to their social media followers and other groups. So what does this have to do with influence marketing? Well, RADS is actually going to market with the idea that brands can use RADS to solicit feedback directly from the audience of the influencers they partner with. And there's money in it for the content creator or influencer as well. 
Matt and I caught up recently to allow him to dive into deeper explanations of all that here on the show. And folks, I'm so gung-ho about this tool, I'm discussing a more connected partnership with RADS moving forward. I want my clients to use it. I think your clients or brands should too. And I think you'll agree after hearing my conversation today with Matt. Before we get to that, though, let's spend a moment thanking and talking about our presenting sponsor, Tagger. One of the headaches many influence marketing practitioners have is pulling all the data from their influence partners. Instagram stories are particularly frustrating. If you don't have a tool like Tagger, you often have to ask the influencer to screenshot their insights, which they do on their phone. Inevitably, part of the report screens are cut off or omitted. It makes for a lot of extra manual work to show results. Well, with Tagger, you give your creators a hashtag to use in their content, a link to authorize Tagger to be able to read their insights automatically on Instagram, and reporting happens automatically, including with Instagram stories. I could go on, but you know I use it. You know I want you to check it out, too. It might be right for your brand or agency. Go to jason.online slash tagger to get a free demo and see if Tagger is right for you. That URL again is jason.online slash tagger. A new tool to gain consumer insights for your brand is out there. And you can use it with influencers to survey their audience about your brand, its content, and more cheaper and faster than consumer insights can be had otherwise. Matt Miller of Rads is next on Winfluence. You know, we talk a lot about influencer marketing software on this show. And the worst thing about it for a lot of you is that influencer marketing software for small businesses is too expensive, right? Well, Reach Influencers solves that problem. Now your small business can find, engage, and manage micro and nano influencers, the ones you can afford to work with. And Reach Influencers costs as low as $100 per month. Are you kidding me? No, it's true. Go to CaptureTheInfluence.com slash podcast and see for yourself. Find, engage, manage, influence with software built and priced for your sized business. CaptureTheInfluence.com slash podcast. Matt, I think probably the most overlooked facet of marketing execution across the industry is consumer research. I don't think enough brands invest in it. I don't think enough agencies sell it through the way they should. And far too many people trust what amounts to blog posts from software companies making claims about consumers based on their own data set, which is always skewed and dirty and not normalized to the population and all that stuff. What what are the reasons that brands and agencies don't do this part of the process well? So I'm actually not from the kind of market research uh, industry, uh, but since I started working on RADS uh, five years or so ago, I've learned a lot more about it. Um, and one of the biggest things is some of the people that are in this industry we've talked to is that people just lie on surveys. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of bias in terms of uh, kind of being given the socially acceptable answer, um, telling the, the person asking the question what they want to hear, um, being afraid of repercussions from kind of answering a certain way, um, especially with kind of the cancel culture um, that we see now. So it's really, uh, it's really, it's really tough. Um, so a lot of people, they just assume people, a lot of people lie and they, so they kind of compare A to B that uh, if they, if the half the people are lying on this question, they assume half the people are lying on, on, on another question or a, a different uh a, a different topic so they can kind of compare, but it's, it's really not, uh, it's not an easy thing to do. Well, and that's a, that's a problem with the data that you get out of it, but I'm, I'm even frustrated on the front end of the process that agencies and brands don't actually do it. I mean, obviously, you know, market research is, is generally cost prohibitive, I think for, for most people, because you're talking about, you know, implementing a survey instrument and the traditional market research way of doing that is, you know, either focus groups or some sort of, you know, literal survey instrument where they're going to, you know, malls and and restaurants and polling people with clipboards, or they're doing some sort of online survey version of it. Um, And so it's a time consuming process. It's also costly. And I think that's certainly the main prohibition, but I still can't get my head wrapped around why when you start off at an agency anyway, when you start off with a client, 
why you don't start with, okay, first of all, we need to know everything about your consumers and we have specific questions. And when we, from the agency side, when we ask the brand that we're working with, oftentimes, what do you know about your consumers? Or can you answer these four or five questions? They're like, oh, well, we'll, we'll get the, the Nielsen report for you, or we'll pull some, some data set that's generic to the industry and not specific. Do you think the primary reasons are just kind of cost and time consumption, the, the why brands and agencies don't invest in it? Uh, yeah, I think I think cost definitely is a big one. Um, so some of the kind of larger companies we've talked to, they'll spend in the millions of dollars on market research a year. So that's very prohibitive for a lot of companies. And, and then when they want to set up a survey, sometimes it takes them a month to get it up and going. And um, lots of companies don't have that kind of time to wait. Um, and then with focus groups, focus groups are even more expensive than the online tools. And, and it's, it's a very small sample size. So if you're, if you're bringing in 20 or 30 people, sometimes you're, you're not getting the best, the best data, not statistically significant. Um, but yeah, even the online tools, some companies are paying kind of a million dollars a year for, for one, one of their tools from some of the bigger, the bigger survey sites. Well, I know you guys have built a tool that addresses some of those pain points, which I want to get to in a second. But you 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 said you don't really come from the the market research background. How did you come to focus on this segment of the industry and market research? How did you find this path, and and you know what fascinates you about it? So I'm a kind of a computer science guy. I kind of t- started teaching myself programming in middle school, so I've been doing that for for probably almost thirty years now. Um, so I just like liked creating stuff. Um, Back in early 2017, there was a, a Pepsi commercial. Um, I think it was Kylie or Kendall Jenner, um, and it, it made the news. People found it offensive. Um, so I thought, I'm sure they, I'm sure they tested this ahead of time, but maybe it was in a in their headquarters in New York City or Southern California. There was another the Peloton commercial from a Christmas or two ago that. Uh, I think the stock dropped about a billion dollars the following day after that came out. Um, And I thought, well, maybe there's just kind of an online tool. An online tool, people from all over the country can kind of tell people what they think about this ad, um, get a better response, more than 30 people, more diverse groups. So I just started creating it. Um, And then over the kind of the last, the, the first couple of years, I realized it took me a while to realize what I had created. And it really was a, a better market research tool, um, not as focused on advertisements anymore, uh, but it was just a way to get people to kind of tell the truth on the surveys. Um, and yeah, we, we made it super quick. So I set up a survey this morning. It took me about uh, five minutes to get it up and get it going. And it's already starting to get responses. So you're getting from kind of idea to when you're getting responses, you're looking at hours instead of days or weeks. So that's fantastic. So that's where the idea came from. I, I don't know that I would go, you know, touting that you were inspired by the Kardashians to build anything, but that's, <laughs> I guess that's, you know, to each his own. Um, but tell us a little bit more about what RADS, which is the name of the tool. Tell us a little bit more about sort of the go-to-market statement, the elevator pitch on, okay, what do you do? What is it that a brand is investing in when they come to RADS and what do they get out of it? So our, yeah, our value propositions are better data. Um, we get rid of a lot of the reasons that people lie on surveys. Uh, we had a gamification where people can re- win rewards. Um, there's a lot of psychology behind it. So instead of giving your personal opinion, you're trying to predict the average answer from all of the respondents. Um, so it creates kind of a competition, adds a little fun. Um, people like to kind of win stuff. Um, they can win money depending on how they're standing. And... It just creates something that's that's more fun for the respondents. The surveys are quick and they're short. You're not getting people that are kind of getting that survey fatigue after two to five minutes of taking a survey. Um, it's a lot more affordable for companies. So if, if you've got a thousand dollar a month market research budget, that's that you can get a lot of data from RADS where the the other survey tools, the focus groups. I mean, it's, there's just not even an option at all. So. 
So tell us a little bit more about the survey mechanism. You, you, you said that it's quick, that it's short. You can turn it around quickly. You can build it quickly. Tell us a little bit more about how it works, though. How, how, do, how do brands use it and, and how do the end users participate in it? How does the, 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 the functionality of it all work? So we have two different types of survey. One's a closed private audience. So if you have a list, if you have followers on your social media, um, text, uh, working with political campaign that the, they can send out text to people, to their constituents to get their feedback. Um, and then we all have the kind of our open surveys, which are we have respondents that have signed up on RADS to earn money. Um, they know how RADS works. Uh, they they get notified as soon as there's a new survey. So if you want to if you want to poll 200 people really quickly, you post your survey. You they get notified. You start getting the feedback right away. And just to be clear, this isn't a survey monkey. It's not necessarily a DIY survey app. This is really a mechanism for brands to get a consistent drip of consumer insights via these sort of short mobile audience friendly. I think five or six question at most surveys. And the intent here is for a brand to leverage RADS in RADS in, in several short surveys versus commissioning a big long study, which can deter participation, right? That's correct. Yeah. Our surveys can range anywhere from about four questions to 11, a um, couple different types of questions. Um, there's been some studies that show um, after about two minutes, the data that you get on surveys starts to really fall off. And I'm getting surveys that are, five, 10, 15 minutes long. And I, and I thought, uh, yeah, I don't know how, if after two minutes it starts to, the data starts to get bad after 10 minutes, it's, it's really bad, I assume. Um, <laughs> I was actually taking a survey yesterday from another kind of another company and sent me a survey and I got, I got half, I, I, I think I was about halfway through it, but I was 10 minutes in and I'm like, I, I just didn't even finish it. Um, yeah. See, our surveys are, can take anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute and a half, two minutes. Uh, you can attach some media. So there's a video attached to it. It could take a little longer, but yeah, they're only ask, answering questions for, for a minute or so. So it seems like to me that RADS is kind of this middle ground between, you know, this, you know, big, expensive, time consuming, uh, you know, consumer research and, you know, maybe just doing throwing up a, a poll on your Facebook you know, page where you're getting, you know, cursory answers from a few fans. You guys, I think, have created something in between where the brand has a lot more direction over the questions that are asked. And depending on how they distribute the survey, whether it's through the open stuff or whether it's through their own, you know, consumer customer lists or whatnot, uh, then they can get a lot more qualified participation. So it seems like it's it's that. And it also seems like RADS is uh, market research for the ADD generation, right? Correct. Yeah, and that's uh, yeah. Even even before the ADD generation, um, there wasn't there wasn't a lot of people that enjoyed answering questions for 10, 15 <laughs> minutes long. Uh, so yeah, it's it's it it really kind of satisfies kind of those two different two different markets. One where there isn't there isn't a survey tool for getting these these quick quick, affordable answers from people. And I mean, it can be used for more in-depth, uh, in-depth studies. So if you, if you have kind of three or four different surveys you want to set up, um, kind of all around the same topic topic, you can ask, you can ask 30 or 40 questions. So. Very nice. I'm curious, does the shortness and the, certainly the, you know, mobile optimized experience, is it really increase participation all that much? I mean, I get asked to participate in surveys, probably as much as anyone else. Most of the time it's via an email or, you know, a QR code on a retail receipt that I'm asked to participate in. If I choose to, I might do maybe one a month at best. And I think I'm probably better than the norm because I work in marketing and I know the value of that participation. I don't think most people participate in them at all, but does the shortness of it suddenly make people go, oh, okay, I'll do it. So there's two, there's two things. One's the, the, the shortness of it. So if you, I mean, if you, Lots of people will start a survey and then they see, oh, there's 40 questions and just don't finish it, or they get a couple minutes into it and they're like, well, this isn't worth my time. Um, the other one is our incentive, our gamification that provides rewards. Even if you're using your own audience, you can set up reward because for an opinion question, there's no right answer, but our gamification creates a correct answer that people are shooting for. Since you're trying to predict the average from all the respondents, 
we're able to rank people by how well they do. So if you're if you're a local restaurant that wants to get some feedback from your customers, you can put a little QR code on the bottom of your of your receipt and set the survey up for a week. At the end of the, the week, you can give out, um, let's say, a $25 gift card to the top three respondents. Hmm. So it's the quickness plus it's the you, you can win a prize. Um, and some of the other surveys will have prizes, but it's either a random thing or everyone that takes the survey gets a gets some small thing. So we can kind of give better prizes and there's a kind of an incentive instead of just a random where if you're just getting a random complete the survey and you have a chance to win a prize, there's no incentive to spend a lot of time thinking about it. So you just kind of complete it as quick as possible. Right. Okay. So uh, Matt Miller of RADS is our guest today. He's explained this survey instrument to us that brands can use to pull consumer insights in a more cost-effective way. When we come back, Matt is going to explain how this platform is connected to influencers and how content creators can profit from connecting with RADS. That's coming up right after this. LinkedIn believes B2B marketing can be B2 brilliant, B2 bold, and B2 breakthrough. How? With a platform purpose built to make B2B mean more for your business. A platform with tools to help you build better relationships with your key customers, to boost your buyer journey while building your brand. A platform with the trusted data and lead generation you need to beat KPIs, drive ROI, and stand out amongst the competition. And with the targeting tools on LinkedIn, you can reach your precise audience right down to their job title, company name, location, and more to make sure your ads are always being seen by those who matter. So get ready to be to boldly go where no marketers have gone before. Because LinkedIn is where B2B is everything it can be. Rethink your B2B marketing LinkedIn ads and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. Back talking to Matt Miller from RADS, a new survey instrument that brands can use to offer up short, mobile-friendly surveys to consumers to keep a steady flow of cost-efficient consumer insights and feedback coming to the brand. Before the break, we told you that influencers have a nice tie-in with RADS too. So Matt, tell us more about how the influencers can help the brands get this survey out there. Yeah. So when I created RADS, it was more of a tool than a product. Um, So there's lots of different industries we thought it could be used in. And the influencers um, has been more of an idea in the last year or so. Uh, There's not a lot of Brands will pay pay influencers to promote them, but there's not a lot of feedback. Um, so it's, well, the, the people click through and, and buy this, but other than that, they're not getting a lot of feedback. And we think RADS is a perfect uh, perfect fit for this because influencers want, want their followers watching their content. They don't want to send them somewhere else to do something for 15 minutes. And since RADS, is, RADS surveys are so quick, um, you put a link on there, 30 seconds, and the respondents are back watching your content. And the influencers have a way to earn additional revenue from the brand. So instead of just promoting the their product, they can provide feedback from their followers, which are, is usually a pretty informed audience on the products. Um, so it's it, that's valuable data for the brands that the influencer kind of doesn't have to do a whole lot of extra work for, and the followers can win win prizes. So if uh, if a brand sets up a survey for the influencer to promote, um, the brand can put, uh, let's say, five twenty-five dollar gift cards to to their company attached to the survey, and the, the followers of the influencer can win can win those prizes. Well, and I think that for the content creators out there, and probably for the brands too, the fact that you said the influencers can profit from this is probably the big, you know, sort of headline that jumps up and, and makes people say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. The influencer can profit because content creators are constantly looking for, you know, ways to monetize and brands are probably looking for ways to make influencers more cost efficient. So if I'm a brand and I'm engaging an influencer and they charge, let's say they charge $5,000 for what I'm doing with them. It, it seems to me that bringing rads on as kind of an add on ask for the influencer might be a way for that $5,000 to be accounted for that doesn't have to necessarily come directly out of the brand's budget 
or it could also be positioned as we're going to pay you the 5k for the content you're creating. And then you're going to make extra money from this rads implementation based on the feedback we get. So give us a little bit more detail on, on how that connection works and how the influencer ultimately makes money from this, this tool. Yeah. So we, we think that the brands would be willing to pay, pay additional money to get feedback from the influencers followers. Um, and it really is a, it, it was a market that, that we saw as kind of every side can benefit from it. The brand's getting a lot of good data. They're probably conducting their own market research in other, in other ways, probably more expensive. Um, maybe not even from a, as good an audience as the influencers followers. So it's, it's a win for them, for the influencer. All they really have to do is put a survey link, um, in, in their social media to their followers. Um, and yeah, it's, it's not, it's not a lot of work for them. They can make additional revenue from the brands by providing that uh, valuable data and from the influence or from the influencers followers, they're getting a way to kind of provide some feedback um, and win prizes. So we think it's just kind of a win, win, win all around. Well, and, and for the talent managers and the content creators out there thinking about this, you could connect with rads directly and basically offer that market research as a product from, you know, Hey, we're not only going to partner with your brand to create great content, but we're also going to follow that content up with a consumer survey. It can be focused on the the quality of the content or the retention of, of the messaging or whatever, but can it also be more broadly about the brand? So there's a way for you talent managers and you creators out there to actually you know, go directly with, you know, rads and take it the other way, not the brand coming to the creator with rads, but the creator going to the brand with rads. And Matt, I I, want to throw this out there just so people can kind of understand the way when I first heard you guys sort of roll this out and tell me what this was, the easy use case I'm thinking of here is a brand, let's just say LaCroix uh, engages several influencers in an awareness campaign about a new flavor, perhaps a seltzer that tastes like something other than carbonated water with a faint notion of an actual flavor, but that's just me. I don't, I hate the taste of seltzers, but that's not the point. So let's say LaCroix has 20 influencers about this new flavor and how they love it and their audience should go try it within that context, or even later as a follow-up piece of content, the creator can say, Hey, look, the LaCroix folks want to know what you think about the new flavor. So click on this link and take a really quick, you know, 30 second survey to let them know, or, uh, they can also, you know, say, hey, you know, we posted something about, you know, seltzer last week. I wanted to see what you guys heard there. It helps me, you know, monetize, you know, my relationship with brands or whatever. Now LaCroix has the chosen influencers audience, the core customers they're trying to reach, giving them direct feedback. And uh, that to me is incredibly, incredibly powerful. I throw that out there because I feel like brand managers and content creators are immediately going to go, Oh wait, this is awesome. We should do this. And I'm assuming that's what you're hoping for. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So it's, if the brands are trying to sell to these, these influencers followers, these are the people they want feedback from. So why, why didn't you buy this or did you buy it? Um, and if you did buy it, what did you like it? Did you not like it? Um, so it seems like the perfect audience to, to really conduct that market research with, but they're really, I don't, I think it was an underutilized market. And I think Rads is kind of just a, just a tool that kind of fits into it very well. Very nice. Well, I'm gung ho about this. I want all my clients to use it because at a minimum as their, you know, sort of content digital influencer strategy partner, I want those consumer insights. I want to know more about what those influencers audiences think about the brand, the competitors, how the, you know, content plays in that influencers channel, what their pain points are in my brand's category. There's all, I mean, I can come up with, you know, a hundred survey questions right now. Um, that would be make a lot of sense to me to get back from those influencers, a simple survey that has higher than normal participation and one that I can flip and ask more questions every couple of weeks or once a month. That's not going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars in six months to complete. Well, hell I'm in. So, uh, uh, and because I'm in Matt, I'm assuming rads won't object to like partnering with me because I want more brands to use this. Right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We're, we're definitely looking for kind of some strategic partners. Um, <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's, it's more of a tool um, that uh, really anybody can use to kind of however fits their, fits their purpose that they're looking for. 
Well, and the general consumers out there who might be listening or the people at agencies or brands or whatnot that don't necessarily have a, you know, your tomorrow use case for this, they can also you know, join, you know, RADS as a consumer to participate in those, you know, sort of sample size surveys. And you have a pool of people that, that go there too. So people can actually sign up to participate in surveys, correct? Yeah. Yeah. People can sign up to do surveys. Um, I signed up for one of the other survey sites, probably nine or 10 years or so ago now, did it for half an hour one day. Uh, the surveys were long, they were boring, and they didn't pay very much. Um, a lot of the third-party kind of review sites say that uh, kind of you can top out around three to five dollars per hour in terms of what you <laughs> what you earn, um, which doesn't doesn't even buy you a gallon of gas anymore. Um, so our surveys are our, our surveys are quick and they're they're it's so easy to complete that that we have respondents. Um, if everyone just randomly answered. Uh, Respondents would make about fifteen dollars an hour, but since it is that, that gamification competition, we have people making kind of thirty, thirty to thirty-five dollars an hour, which is which is a lot uh, a lot more appealing than that three to five dollars per hour. So well, and uh, obviously, whether you're an individual, you're a content creator, you're a talent manager, or certainly on the brand or agency side of things, uh, you should definitely go check out Rads. We've actually set up a special link. For you to do that, uh, because yes, I'm I'm all in on this. I, I'm gung ho about the idea. I think this is a, a fantastic tool for our industry to use. I think it's great for creators. It's great for brands. It's great for agencies that are bringing it to the table and recommending it to the brands they work with. So we've set up a special URL. It's Jason dot online slash Rads and Rads is R A A D Z. So two A's in there. R A A D Z. Jason dot online slash Rads. That will be operational to get you there. And it really just allows them to see how many of you from this particular podcast and from, you know, all the Jason Falls content out there comes to Rad. So would appreciate it if you go check that out. What uh, social networks are you guys on, Matt, so people can find you there if they want to connect? We're on LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Um, but we need to get back to kind of posting more content there. Well, this this is a B2B tool, so I'm going to recommend that everybody connect with you on LinkedIn. That's that's probably makes more sense for the audience that we've got here. But you can look for RADS, R-A-A-D-Z, on your social network of choice, of course. Um, and the URL again, jason.online slash RADS, R-A-A-D-Z. Matt, thanks for the time and creating such a, a fascinating, useful tool. Uh, hopefully, we're going to be uh, better informing brands and better informing creators with it over the, the coming years. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for having me, Jason. How about that? I hope you all know that I'm 100% serious about this. The possibility of spending as low as $12,000 in a year, as Matt said, to have a constant flow of survey instrument responses coming back from not just consumers, but the ones I covet the most, the audience I'm targeting by using influence partners. I cannot recommend this enough. It's a game changer. Go to jason.online slash rads. That's R-A-A-D-Z. There's two A's in there. Jason.online slash R-A-A-D-Z rads and find out more. Folks, don't forget to drop Winfluence a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. We're on all of them. Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartMedia, Podchaser, TuneIn, Good Pods, Listen Notes, Audible, Pandora, Amazon Music. If we're not where you listen, let me know and I will correct that ASAP. Whatever your app or listening mode, if you are listening to us right now, and I hate to break it to you, but you are, look for the stars or ratings on that app or site and tap or click. Let us know how we're doing. Also, if you'd like a deep dive on an influence marketing topic every so often, as well as highlighted case studies, creators, and inspiration about influence marketing, subscribe to my email newsletter at jason.online slash subscribe. I send it monthly in general. The latest fired last week, so sign up now and don't miss what I'm working on for July. jason.online slash subscribe. Get on that list. And I'd love for you to help make a future episode of Influence awesome. Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on. Send an email to jason at jasonfalls.com. If you're feeling adventurous, you can also record your question as a voice memo on your phone. Email me that file and I'll play it back so that you're asking the question yourself right here on the show using the recording. Regardless of how you ask it, I may use your comment on a future episode or your question to inspire a show topic. 
If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence, the book, as a thank you. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. This podcast is coming to you on the MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. There's another show on MPN you might enjoy as well. I'm Matt Bailey, host of the Endless Coffee Cup. In each episode, we talk more about marketing, culture, technology, and our digital lifestyle while having a conversation over coffee. Subscribe to the Endless Coffee Cup, then pour yourself a cup, sit back, relax, and join the conversation. Just visit SiteLogic.com or search for The Endless Coffee Cup wherever you